Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. The NASCAR Hall of Fame inducted five more, and we had a weekend to remember. Atlantic City staged the annual Gambler's Classic, and we lost another true racer in every sense of the word. All this and more. Welcome to Speedway Report, Monday, February 3rd, 2020. From the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina, I'm Patrick Reynolds, and thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. Now, the fastest 12 minutes in all of sports, I think, are Shakira and J-Lo's hips. If you took the restrictor plate off me, I still couldn't keep up with that. But we're going to do the best we can to give you a little bit of entertainment that marvels the Super Bowl. Um, YouTube, yeah, our channel. Have you subscribed? Weekly reminder. Subscribe to Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds. Never missed a podcast. We drop it right into your inbox. And do you hear what I said? It's February, peeps. Isn't that just the magical time of year? We're all getting ready for Speed Weeks. Had the Rolex 24 a couple of weeks ago. When you get home from Daytona, local tracks are pretty much right around the corners. Here in the south, they start to pop open. The gates start to open, and we just bleed our way north. Speed weeks, it's February. That is a great time to share. A little bit to do with the Speedway Report Victory Lane Lap. Let's begin with the Lucas Oil Late Models. They ran their Super Bowl. Not the football game, but the Super Bowl of dirt racing in Brunswick, Georgia over the weekend, an annual event. Tim McCready won that A main. Now, his uh, famous father, Bob, is battling some health issues, and that was uh, heavy on Timmy's heart. So a good win not for the comp- not only for the competition, but for the family as well as his mind and his heart were elsewhere, and we wish Bob McCready a speedy recovery. Don't have a lot of details on what's going on with him. Used to watch Barefoot a lot up the state New York and in the Northeast on the Dirt Big Black Tour. Now, the Lucas Oil Late Models are racing tonight at East Bay Raceway near Tampa, Florida, and will be there the rest of the week. It's 7.30 Eastern time as we do this live, so not right now, but when the show is over, click off your computer if you're in the area of Tampa and head over to East Bay Raceway. Catch some racing for the Lucas Oil Late Models. I'll have you out of here shortly. And let's go up north with the Gambler's Classic in Atlantic City, New Jersey. The three-quarter midget Big A main on Saturday night. Won by Andy Jan Kowiak, the Champ Carts by Doug Steerly, and the Slingshots by Scott Neary. Now, a whole lot happened uh, this past week, and we're going to get with sad news, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience with John Andretti and more so with his family. Obviously, Andretti, Andretti of the famous uh, namesake almost epitomizes and defines auto racing. When a cop pulls you over and say, who do you think you are, Mario Andretti? Well, yeah, this is part of the family. John is the son of Aldo, Mario's twin brother, which makes him the nephew to uh, Mario and the cousin to Michael and Jeff. One of the famous names, and he was diagnosed diagnosed with colon cancer recently in the last few years, was undergoing cancer treatments, and eventually he lost the battle last week. Andretti, as you would imagine, racer through and through. Now, I call people racers, and not everybody is that participates in the sport. Andretti absolutely was. I just heard, uh, or was, excuse me, a reminded of a quote earlier today by, why don't you go do something instead of be something? And that rings true in the case of, I want to be a race car driver, or I want to drive race cars. They're not the same thing. Johnny Andretti did. He drove race cars. What did he drive and what did he win in? Obviously, the Indy cars. He won at NASCAR's highest level in the Cup Series for two of the most famous names and car owners in the sport, Cale Yarborough and Richard Petty, driving for both of them. He was an NHRA top fuel competitor briefly at one time and did win some rounds in the top fuel world. He visited Victory Lane at IMSA Sports Cars, and he worked his way up through the ranks on short tracks. He's run the dirt. He's run pavement. He ran, uh, gosh, the fifth mile at Dorney Park 
in Pennsylvania, no longer there. Uh, the paved fifth mile and modifieds, run dirt, run pavement, worked his way up, uh, just a racer in every sense of the word. That I think was a lot of the def meant a lot of the definition to me is one of the, the talents I, I, I've always admired. There was some a point in racing is drivers that could hop from discipline to discipline. I've always been fascinated and highly impressed with folks like that. Uh, the throwbacks uh, of AJ Foyt and Parnelli Jones that did this with perfection. Dan Gurney just did so much that, you know, in today's world of contracts and legalities, guys do it so much more. Now, you know, I was a big fan of Richard Petty's who pretty much stuck with stock cars, did a little drag racing along the way. That doesn't mean I have any less respect for him. He's probably my favorite driver. However, there's that aspect uh, of drivers today that can hop from sprint cars to stock cars to sports cars and just, just different, different disciplines and show excellence win in them. In more recent times, I think of a, uh, a Tony Stewart, a Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, these type of guys, it doesn't matter. They just need a steering wheel and a gas pedal and they'll get the job done. John Andretti was that type of a guy. Now, he never put up Hall of Fame numbers in any particular series. But when you see, you start making the check marks as to what he won in, there's very few drivers out there that would have that vast array on their resume. The numbers for each are not that high. However, across the spectrum, you'd be hard-pressed to find too many people that could compete with John Andretti with that many wins in that many different types of race cars. One of my biggest favorite memories of the Andretti family was actually talking to not John, but his son Jarrett. In the garage area at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the year escapes me, but I'm going to guess it was around 2009, 2010, early, early 2010s maybe. I don't know, something like that. John was up in Indianapolis. It was race morning of the 500 in May, and it was one of the programs that John had put together in conjunction with Richard Petty. And because I remember Richard was there and uh, a lot of folks from NASCAR were there, and John was was part of that. And I wound up saying hi to, you know, saw John in the garage, said saw Richard in the garage, and it was incredibly busy on 500 morning. But I wound up chatting with Jarrett. And at the time, Jarrett was in his teens and living around here uh, in Mooresville around Lake Norman. And I began chatting with Jarrett about school because he was about the same age as my son at the time. They were within a few years of each other. So we compared actually local school systems uh, about where John went to, or excuse me, where Jarrett was going to school, where my son was going to school. And the real people aspect of the Andretti family just popped out. We talked about teachers and classes and what Jarrett wanted to do and riding a school bus. And the surreal memory of this is here I am in the pit stall, excuse me, in the garage area of an Andretti on race morning of an Indianapolis 500. And I'm talking about school systems. It's the father and me. It was the family aspect of Jarrett. We had a great conversation, and uh, this past week, Jarrett has been a strong force for the family, and he's posted on social media and been a leader and a wonderful uh, advocate for the Andretti name. So Godspeed, John Andretti, you gave us so many memories, and you really put forth a spectacular example of the Andretti family, what a real racer should be, and you really tick the boxes on me, and I just uh, love the aspect of guys that can hop from, from those different disciplines. Not only run well, but win. Win. I mean, how many, how many guys have visited Victory Lane at Martinsville and in Australia in an Indy car? Not too many. Not too many, if any. <laughs> but John Andretti could say that. Uh, John, Thank you for all you did. Uh, bringing awareness, if nothing else, to colon cancer in men, in women. Get it checked. That hashtag that went up and was so popular, check it for Andretti. It's not a pleasant thing to talk about, but uh, early detection could certainly save a life. And hopefully some people's lives are getting saved right now because of John Andretti's story. John, rest in peace, and thanks for all you did for us on the track and off the track.
that was well somewhat of a sad story but hopefully uplifting uh for what john contributed and maybe in the health aspect even my words may reach someone and maybe save a life but let's turn the the conversation to something a little more positive at the nascar hall of fame induction ceremonies last weekend in charlotte north carolina i was privileged to attend and i enjoyed watching the uh, inductees getting their jackets getting put into the hall it was um, always an amazing event to go to uh i went to the first one in 2010 have not been to every single one but i've been to a lot of them but the main draw there and my main interest there was to see dr dick bergeron except the Squire Hall Award for Media Excellence. Named after Ken Squire and Barney Hall, when it comes to NASCAR and auto racing media, those are two of the legends. Dick Berger, absolutely so, so deserving of this award. I first picked up a copy of Stock Car Racing Magazine's magazine, I think in the late 70s, and I remember a beautiful color photo to across two pages talking about the Richmond Fairgrounds race. So this is when we had the bigger wheelbase uh, stock cars and cup. Uh, Daryl Waltrip was driving for Die Guard. Um, Dave Marcus was in the K&K insurance car. Naturally, Petty and STP and uh, some other guys. Kale was driving for Junior Johnson, the Holly Farms car. And the race at Richmond was still 500 laps long. I'm dating myself. This was a long time ago. That's the first issue I ever saw of Stock Car Racing Magazine. I don't recall where it came from because my age was in single digits still. But there was a writer in that magazine, Dr. Dick Bergeron. He's still at it today. I now work outside of here. I've got several jobs in the racing field for Traction Media, which produces Speedway Illustrated Magazine and CC Racer Magazine. Dick Bergeron is basically the founder of both of those. Stock car racing eventually got bought and closed. Dick res created Speedway Illustrated. That went the distance. That got sold, but the company that sold it got rid of it. The people involved in Speedway Illustrated created the new version of Speedway Illustrated, which it is now, and here it is. Ten years later, still going strong. And I'm a part of that. And Dick Bergeron still writing, and he is actually the February uh, cover story for his recipient of the Squire Hall Award. I looked at the highlight reel from Dick Bergeron, and it went back to his TV work in the 80s when he was covering a pit road, same as he always did, but it wasn't for the big giants like Fox, which that network didn't even exist yet. But remember Mislu, remember Jefferson Pilot, when we saw a cup race that was run one weekend, taped, and the hour version was shown the following weekend at some point, often on a Saturday afternoon, you know, condensed version of it. I was one of the nerds that was watching that one hour condensed version because, oh my God, there was a race on TV, and I'll be darned if I was going to miss it. I'm one of the people that helped build the sport to where they could get that billion dollar TV deal, and then they screwed us all by 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 destroying the sport whole nother topic for a whole nother show and i beat that horse into the glue factory anyway but there was highlight reel of uh, of the hall of fame of dick bergeron on pit road in the mid 80s and he was uh, uh doing interviews with the cup cars and i knew i remember these shows they were not live you know so many of the races at the time were not live a bunch of them were and that this was in the 80s it grew so much onto cable television but uh, it was a little bit of, uh, of of a surreal feeling that this is now part of the company that i am a part of about 10 years 11 years ago i got my first story ever in speedway illustrated i did one about building a rear and we used Michael Walter Bracing as the background for building a rear end housing. Then I did car features on uh, Kyle Busch's late model after he won his first Snowball Derby. And I did one for uh, Bono's Modified that Ryan Newman ran in so many uh, pavement modified races. But I've had some stories written in Speedway Illustrated. And as time went on, uh, here I am actually on staff at the magazine as well as doing this gig here. And uh, it was a pleasure and an honor to actually watch Dick Bergeron accept that. Uh, Dick 
has always been a storyteller. That's what he did. He was one of the reporters that you could compare to the Chris Economaki style, where he uh, treated the broadcast with dignity and respect. And you guys know who I'm talking about. Not everybody does that today. Well, you know, since this new TV deal came along about 20 years ago, there have been a lot of personalities on the different networks that wanted to make themselves the story. Dick Bergeron told the story. You don't make yourself the story. You tell it. Good journalism, good reporting. Ask the questions. Know the sport. And he did all of that. And uh, Dr. Dick, he set an example for all of us to follow. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of Speedway Illustrated and CC Racer. Dick Bergeron, the winner this year of the Squire Hall Award at the NASCAR Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. Now, I want to ask uh, about this Super Bowl, which I don't know the answer to. And if you're watching and you can throw in the comments here, what happened to the Super Bowl of dirt racing down in Brunswick, Georgia? I told you about that earlier, the race that Tim McCready won. It's the opening race for the Lucas Oil 8 models. But this used to be a three-day show. I think it was 100 laps, and we had 20 grand or 30 grand to win on the final night. Now it's really shrunk, and it's a 50-lapper. Now, granted, McCready won about 12000 for the win, but the status and impact of this uh, the Super Bowl of dirt racing seems to have digressed and shrunk over the years. I want to know if anybody knows why. Lucas oiled this so much for dirt racing. So wherever you're watching, if you're watching it on a replay here, please throw that in the comments if you got some inside scoop as to why the track in Brunswick or the series has contracted this event. This used to be a really, really big kickoff to Speed Weeks. Everybody was heading to Florida. You stop into Georgia, make a cool 20 grand for winning the race, and it was a big deal. But it's just kind of, I don't know, kind of diminishing a little bit. I want to know what happened to it. So if you could throw that in the comments, I'm curious. I'm a short tracker, and I'm heading to Florida. Uh, I'll be in Florida next week, so I, and it'll be all short track racing. So I'm looking forward to that, and if you give me some answers on this uh, before I get to Florida, that would be cool. So I'm putting my future in the hands of my audience. Is anyone else like me, and you follow this NFL Super Bowl, and to me, when it's on Fox, it's just an extended version of the Daytona 500 pre-race. Commercials? Yeah, I was looking for the promos for the Daytona 500, which I didn't think were that impressive. Uh, I still don't know the start time, if we're going to do an early one or a later green flag. But, yeah, to me, the NFL, you guys that know me, you know. If it's got an engine in it and goes fast, I'm into it. If it's played with a stick or a ball, I don't follow it too much and don't know a whole lot. Uh, so when the big football game is played, uh, when it's on Fox, it seems like a Daytona 500 extended pre-race as we're two weeks out from the 500. And I certainly want to uh, talk about Tim McCready one last time. I'm going to give him the nod for our Racer of the Week and our tribute to Motor Week Illustrated and Dave Despain. Him and uh, Andy Jankowiak, I really looked at the two of them uh, closely with Andy's win up at Atlantic City. That is a tough track. In the Boardwalk Hall, tough competition, but so was the Lucas Oil late model opener. And I gave the nod to McCready as we think about his dad, Bob McCready, uh, getting well. I thought it was a heavy heart, a heavy head. McCready stepped up in the true sense of a racer, like John Andretti, overcame the obstacles and was able to park it in victory lane. And we have a new audience member. I want to say hi to Michelle in Brooklyn. Yes, Brooklyn, New York. Sat next to her at the NASCAR Hall of Fame dinner on Friday night. And we've got an audience member from Brooklyn, New York. We have enough time, a hard enough time here in North Carolina getting people to watch this show and pay attention to the sport as we wave the flag for it. Yes, there is a sign of auto racing life in New York City. It's outstanding. And we still got to burrow our way into Manhattan a little bit in Queens, but at least we got somebody in Brooklyn watching us. So up there in New York, great to have you on board with us. I love welcoming new folks to the show and giving auto racing and Speedway Report a shot. Thanks to all of you that tuned in. And thanks, yeah, Brooklyn. I can't believe it either. Way cool. I dig it. 
Brooklyn audience member. How cool is that? I might be reaching the big time here someday, folks. Uh, in between our broadcasts, keep up on the world of auto racing with SpeedwayReport.com. This show and all of your past ones are uploaded on the site. We've also got racing articles to read, so head on over to SpeedwayReport.com for the podcast and some good stories. On social media, hit me up on Facebook, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds and Racers Reunion. On Twitter, I'm at Speedway Pat and at Speedway Report. And our shows are also stored at racersreunion.com, where we were born. We're still on the forum in Racers Reunion. And like I said at the top of the show, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Big thanks to everyone that tuned into the Facebook Live feed tonight and joining the conversation at the show. If you got any insight on the Super Bowl of dirt racing down in Georgia, why we're shrinking, not growing, I'd love to know about it. You folks with the Lucas Oil Connections. Hook a brother up. I want to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here every Monday. Freedom is not free, and a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report, take care of yourselves and come home soon. A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and follow me on Twitter. I'm at Speedway Pat. Now, if you are on Facebook Live right now, Head on over to the Drag Racing List page. What page is that? Drag Racing List, because Drag List Live is coming up at the top of the hour. Bill, John, and Barb got all the straight line talk. And this is important because, watch how I tie all this in together, we will be back here uh, live on Facebook Monday, February 10th, and we're going to look back on the NHRA Winter Nationals in Pomona. NHRA opens up this week. We're also going to look at the Bush Clash at Daytona, the early results from Florida Short Track Speed Weeks, and if it all works out, this show might be broadcast live from New Smyrna Speedway on Monday night, the site of the ARCA East Series opening race. Monday night, uh, the ARCA Series with two or modifieds at New Smyrna. I'm going to try to do the show live from the track but we'll see what happens. Best laid plans of mice and men. I vision big. I look big. Why not? Let's go for it. I'll see if we can make it happen. We'll talk to you guys Monday, February 10th. Thank you all for watching. With any luck, we'll see you next week live from New Smyrna. Everybody have a good week.